Okay, hi guys. I'm not 100% sure how this video is gonna go today. I've been sort of compiling the footage that I have for the last week or so and realized that this whole entire vlog was just gonna be about the processing and packing and sending out of the orders I had for my zine. If you're new here, I spent October drawing 31 haunted houses. I compiled that into this zine, um, Houses and What Haunts Them. I don't know if you can see, see that, but I made a limited print run of 350 of those and put them up on sale at the beginning of November. They all sold um, overnight. So I thought with this vlog, I would just dedicate it completely to just showing you the preparation for sending these out, just the whole kind of behind the scenes of that kind of home business process. Now, obviously, if you're not interested in that kind of stuff, feel free to switch off. There's not gonna be anything else in this video that might interest you in any way. Um, and then for, for the end of November, I will do like a proper summary of my month um, for stuff that wasn't zine related. But yeah, I do get a lot of questions about the sort of behind the scenes of being an artist and also um, having like your own business. So hopefully this video won't be too long and too boring. Hopefully it's something that at least someone out there will find useful. I had to make some notes just um, to keep me on track for this video. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's all the days laid out. I made a note of all the little things that I did. So to start with, I ended last month's vlog, the October vlog. I was buying up the packaging supplies that I needed. One commenter asked how I know what supplies I'm gonna need for packaging. Um, for this particular project, because there were 350 zines, I bought about 400 um, padded envelopes for those um, and you know, just 400 of anything that I would need so I had a little bit of leeway. In general for packaging, I just have maybe 100, 200 of each different thing that I use, so A5 envelopes, A4 envelopes and padded envelopes. I'll have a good solid supply of those. Obviously it depends on how much space you have but it's always better to buy in bulk I find just because you save so much money and you don't really have to worry about things running out too quickly. <laughs> you just kind of have to work out what you're going to need and also how much space you have to store those things. Another thing to think about is making sure that you have enough of the smaller things like postage labels, the sticky labels, and also ink for your printer if you have an inkjet printer. I'm not sure how laser jet printers work, but if you, you just need to make sure that you have supplies of those things to print out your labels. Business cards. Another random little thing is um, customs labels. If you are sending packages abroad, uh, depending on the size, depending on where you're sending them, depending on where you're sending them from, you might need a customs label uh, to go on that and those you can get normally at your post office. Um, I don't know how it works around the world, but over here you can just get them from the post office. So that was all kind of pre-November. On the 1st of November, I kind of tidied my room up a bit. If you remember the end of last month's vlog, my room was a complete tip just because I had chosen that time to start reorganizing everything and buying new furniture. Everything was all over the place. I tidied up as best I could. I didn't really organize things, just kind of pushed things aside so that my room was less of an assault course. And that took the whole of the 1st of November. 2nd of November, I was completely out of the house all day. Um, it was Ozzy's graduation. I do have some footage of that, but I'll add that into the end of the month vlog. But that was a lovely, great day. Great to get out of the house and celebrate and, you know, eat out and just a big momentous day, really. Um, and then the 3rd of November is when the whole process kind of started to kick into gear. So, so that's the day that the zines arrived. I ordered them from an online printing service. So far with things like this, I've used a different service every time just because I'm trying to feel out which ones I like the best. So I won't, I'm not gonna recommend anywhere until I've found the one. Um, but yeah, they arrived. I was really, really nervous. Just, you know, I wasn't sure. When you order something online like that and you haven't sort of been there for the process of it being made, you never know how they're gonna turn out. Not really, so it was a huge, huge kind of leap of faith and thankfully they were really good quality. They came out really nicely. You know, I couldn't complain. I think next time I'll probably 
continue to try and find um, somewhere else just because I am such a perfectionist I think I just need things to be completely spot on so that day I went through them just made sure they were okay and then I got to work on making some stickers for my packaging completely not necessary but I like to have that kind of extra little touch um, I normally do have stickers on each of my orders that go out when they're wrapped in tissue paper so I wanted to make a special set of stickers for the packaging and all I did was just create a little drawing on my iPad Pro put that up on my computer and then just print those all out. I think I printed about 400 of those as well. You know what would be funny, but like really not funny? Imagine if I printed these on the wrong side of the paper, so instead of being stickers they were just like useless squares of paper. Probably should have checked before I cut them all out. Okay, yes, we do have stickers. That is the day that I edited the October vlog as well. So just trying to do as much as I could postage wise, um, but also carry on with things that needed doing behind the scenes as well. All right, the 4th of November, which was the day before the zines would go on sale, I set up the shop listing on my website. I use WordPress with the plugin WooCommerce. I just prefer having complete control over my own shop. And with the shop listing, I obviously will write how many there are, a description of them, just make sure everything's all in place for that. While I was doing that I had my boyfriend come round and he was taking pictures of the zines and editing those to put on the shop listing as well and I think when you are doing something like this where there are a lot of tasks to do at once it really helps to have someone around that can kind of pick up the slack do the things that you don't necessarily need to be doing yourself so that was a great help um it was also nice to have him there for the weekend just as kind of back up and support for the craziness that was about to ensue so also that day i filmed my sketchbook tour which was the sketchbook that had all the drawings in it um i would have done that anyway but i also felt that that would be a good kind of i guess publicity for it um, but more so just kind of act as a reminder for people if they did want to get it I was going to schedule that to go up at the same time as the zines went on sale so I filmed that and then my boyfriend popped out to go and watch the football at a friend's house so I took that time to tidy my room a little bit more really properly clear it and clean it make sure everything was away and it was a blank canvas to just kind of make it its own packing and sorting office for a couple of days so just make sure everything was away all that was out was the the zines and the packing supplies that i'd need okay then the 5th of november came around and it was zine time so the zines are now up just for my patrons at the moment as i said i'd wanted to do just a sort of early access for them just to say thanks for their support in these last couple of months they'll be up in a few hours later on tonight for for everyone else so one great thing about having this sort of i've been calling it a soft launch on patreon so rather than having it just like fully out there already it's nice to have had that kind of almost like a practice run where if there were any problems they would have been highlighted earlier today and I would be able to sort that out in time for um, the main release tonight. At the moment it's all going well people seem really interested so it's looking like it's probably on track to be my biggest kind of volume of sales in one day which is interesting it's going to be a really interesting thing to see how i approach it so my preparations for today i've just gathered up all my kind of postage supplies in the background so everything is just laid out how i'm going to need it the plan for this evening is for us to have some dinner and chill out for a bit and then we'll set up a kind of assembly line situation where I will be signing and numbering each of the zines and he will then sort of put it into the plastic bags, add the business cards. Someone asked why I put two business cards in. Um, that's just something that I read, I think, when I was first setting up a shop. Um, there are loads of like articles and loads of blog posts and videos out there on sort of setting up your online business um, and they will say to put two business cards in, one for the person that's receiving it and then one that they can give to a friend so they can keep that for themselves and they can also pass on your information to someone else so that is why I put two business cards into each of my orders. Um, so the plan is obviously package those up more or less, get them in the plastic bag so that if you know the package gets wet they won't get damaged put a couple of business cards in there with them and yeah really all I have to remember to do tonight is to make sure 
at half nine I make that shop listing public for everyone at the same time that that video goes out to say that it's public. So I have my three boxes of zines here ready to be packaged up and then behind them here is where I'm keeping this massive box so you can see how big that is of padded envelopes on top of it I have these stickers I made in one box all my new uh, business cards I get my business cards from Moo I just really like the quality of their products I always have used Moo and I believe they're London based as well which is always a nice bonus I also have my black tissue paper I think I have about 200 sheets here um, these are A5 uh, postal bags and a few more padded envelopes that I have left over from the 30 ways to fill a sketchbook uh, shipment that I did quite a few months ago now so all in all I believe I have like 400 plus padded envelopes uh, don't mind my <laughs> don't mind my missing nails I think it's about time for me to get rid of these and then and then this is the work uniform for the next uh, couple of days probably uh, just keeping it nice and warm and cozy so yeah lots of nerves lots of excitement there was a really funny atmosphere that day because it was fireworks night here as well but having done all the preparation that I could we had quite a chill evening just watched telly had dinner watched X Factor um, the whole time I was just kind of looking at the clock making sure that I was ready to click that button and get things out there and then the time finally came. Yeah. Okay, it's time. The zine is going live. Okay. Have you done it? I think it's out there. Hey, looks good. Oh, phone's going crazy. Now we wait. Oh, Jesus. Oh, gosh, that's awkward. The website crashed pretty much instantly. At first, I thought it was a problem with my computer. Then I tried on my phone and realised that I couldn't get through. At the same time, I had been talking to one of you guys on Instagram, like in my DM, someone had messaged me saying, you know, that they were sort of counting down to the release and they sent me a picture. They were on my website at like 9.28 and they also couldn't get through. We're both kind of trying and like emails start coming in, people aren't sure what's going on. The comments on the video were saying like we can't get through. Um, so I kept trying. I was panicking and freaking out I wanted to cry but I realized eventually that I could get through if I kept trying and then a few comments were coming in that people were getting through it was just like beyond any expectations beyond anything I mean it was insane and it was scary exciting annoying but overall I mean I don't even have words for it so I was freaking out I kept going on there and checking and then it got to a point where Ozzy said just shut the laptop put your phone down you can't control this you can't do anything about it just you know leave it for now and stop clogging up the service yourself uh, so we watched more TV for a little bit but then I think we both kind of had this like looming feeling where we we're like we probably should get on with things now so he suggested we go upstairs open a bottle of wine and just start on the signing and numbering and packaging of the zines because just part of the like limited edition thing was for all of them to be numbered so people would know you know that that was one of 350 so we put on some proper rubbish telly and we just sat there for I think three hours where I would number them and sign them he would put them in their polythene bags, uh, put a couple of business cards with them and after every 50 I think we would go through make sure that everything was in order and then pop them over to the side and start another 50. <laughs> Alright and then it came to the morning after. Obviously the first thing I did when I woke up was checked uh, on my phone and by that point they had all sold they actually sold out at half two in the morning here, so that's five hours, I think. Yeah, that's five... Five hours. <laughs> we'll say that was five hours from the release time to them selling out. Okay, so... Last night got a bit crazy. Um, Everything was sold, which is kind of insane, 
Really weird to say that out loud. Ooh, explosions. Yeah, not, not what I was expecting. Are those fireworks? Yeah, I think so. It's a, it is a firework moment. It's amazing, it's scary, it's really exciting. Um, it still hasn't really sunk in. So now, a very busy day, I am sort of in the process of setting up all the shippingness. So what I've done is I use WordPress for my website and I had to get a plugin to be able to export all the orders um, into a spreadsheet and now I'm just separating each part of the spreadsheet so I've got a bit that's like UK standard shipping, people that have just ordered one of the zines and nothing else. Um, I have another one that's like people that have ordered the zine and other things, people that have ordered more than one zine, maybe one for them, one for friend international standard, international track, they're all split into different categories just so that I can go through each group one at a time, things aren't going to be ending up where they're not supposed to be. The international one is the one that's confusing me the most, just because I'm not sure if I should split it into countries. Uh, there are about 20 different countries that I can remember, so that could be a, that could be a hefty task. I'm just going to start with the UK ones. Um, just because that seems like a doable thing. The UK one item per package orders, I can do that. And I think once I've done that, I'll get into a rhythm of things. I do have my trusty assistant. <laughs> so we're just gonna, we're just gonna crack on. We have a lot of things to wrap as well. I'll just show you as we go. So then it was time to start packaging them. I may have already explained this, but the spreadsheet, you export all your orders and you can sort of go through and group them into different categories. So I started out with the UK standard shipping zine only orders. So all I would have to do is get the zine, put it in the envelope, put it in a pile and then print out all the postage labels and then upload that spreadsheet onto the Royal Mail website, print out all those labels and stick them to each of the packages that I'd prepared. Hope that made sense. It was at this point that I realized um, that I was having issues with my PayPal account. I'm not gonna be able to do all this because my PayPal's not working. So I guess because of just the amount of activity on it all at once, they, uh, what do they call it? limited my account so I didn't money could go in but I couldn't access it I couldn't take it out I couldn't use it you can call me yeah mm, good so I spent some time on the phone with them they sent me an email telling me what I needed to do I did those things but it was going to take some time to sort that out so in the meantime I used like my own like personal bank account to start paying for the postage so that was slightly stressful but you know, it's just one of those things that you can't control. Um, I think if I were doing this again, I might set up like a contingency fund in the background for postage, because um, we'll, I mean, we'll get to that a bit later on, but a long story short, I still don't have access to that money. So it's kind of been interesting. <laughs> yeah, when it came to packaging, we just kind of set up an assembly line of wrapping them in the tissue paper, sticking the sticker on, popping them into the padded envelope. And then I printed out all the postage labels from the Royal Mail, Royal Mail website and stuck them on, made a big pile, popped them in some big bag for lifes and 
got them ready to take to the post office the next day. And I will get to how I keep a record of what's been sent and what hasn't a little bit later on. So 7th of November, I was on my own again. Um, obviously, Ozzy has a life of his own and he couldn't stay here and help me package all week. So at that point, I was quite settled into it anyway. I was quite happy to be on my own. You guys know I just love repetitive tasks. I've said before, I think that I would love to work in a post office because I just love like packing envelopes and sticking things on them over and over and over again. So at that point, I was so grateful to have had him there to mellow me out when I was stressed and to sort of back me up with things and just help with, with that initial burst of work. And by that point, I was quite happy to crack on with it on my own. So the first set were on their way, they were out there off into the abyss. I knew it would only be about a day before they would get to people just because within the UK it shouldn't take any longer than that first class. On that day I decided to work on the mixed orders. So people that had ordered more than one zine, people that had ordered a zine and a print or a zine and several prints and people that had ordered things that weren't the zine. So I started out by just making a list. So again, had my spreadsheet with all the orders on, separated the ones that had multiple orders on them, and then I made a list of each and every different additional thing that I was gonna need so that I could then get to work on either getting out the prints, I have like a drawer full of prints that I have ready, and also printing out any more that I was gonna need. And then I laid those all out on a table and with my list again just went through saying like okay zine, airborne and then put it in an envelope, zine, another zine, put it in an envelope and then on the envelope write down um, the name of the person who ordered it. It got a little bit complicated here and there just because um, the zine packaging wouldn't be the same for things that didn't include the zine so I would have to sort of switch out of the rhythm to use different tissue paper, different stickers but overall it, even though it took longer than I expected it wasn't overly complicated. And then when it came to the postage labels, again, that wasn't as straightforward. And that's, I'm quite glad that I did this day in the middle, just because if I'd finished off with it, it would have been too much stress. Um, with those, each individual item had to be weighed on their own, so I couldn't just bulk pay for them saying, they're all an A5 padded envelope that weigh this much. I had to do each and every one of them because some were larger envelopes, some were postal tubes, some weighed less, some were smaller envelopes. So. There's probably a way to streamline that aspect of things, but for now, this is the first time that I've had this many orders at once, so I really was just kind of playing it by ear. I also, that night, because I still had a bit of time, I did the same thing that I had done on the first day for the international tracked orders. So I packaged those all up. I imported all the order details into the Royal Mail website, got all the labels ready for that, but I couldn't actually purchase the labels to be able to print them and stick them onto the orders because at that point I did run out of money. Um, so I have about three personal bank accounts that I had completely emptied just paying for the postage of the last sets of orders. Um, still didn't have access to my PayPal account, so those orders just had to kind of sit on my desk um, while I kind of figured out how I was gonna do that. That's when the stress really kind of started to kick in because I really wanted to get those out there, get them out to people. They've paid for it, they've paid for the postage. It's just that things on my end aren't like coming together at that point. So the next day those mixed orders were sent out and now we can talk about like how I 
would mark those as dispatched. So everyone that get the orders from me will get an email confirming their order and also an email when I send it out to them, hopefully. And to do that on my website, all I have to do is, you know, put a tick next to their order and it will automatically send them an email to say that it's been dispatched. What I didn't want to do was just go through Get, get all those orders up on my website and just tick, 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 tick them all because I thought that this would be a great opportunity to check that, you know, every person that has ordered is going to get what they've ordered. So I would get my spreadsheet up with all the names and orders on it that I'd exported and I knew that if the name was on that spreadsheet, I would have printed a label for it because I upload that whole spreadsheet onto the Royal Mail website. Every single one of those names would be on that record. So I would get my spreadsheet open on one side of my laptop screen, get my website open on the other side and just go name by name. And you know, if the name was on there and if the name was on there, tick that name your order's been dispatched and just keep going like that. So every name that's on this spreadsheet, I know I've printed a postage label for, so I know I'm sending that out today. So the corresponding order on my shop, I feel confident in saying that that is on its way. And then by the end of it, if I have any orders that are left in the shop that aren't completed, I can then do those individually. I could do that with the UK orders, just filter out those on my website and get that spreadsheet open. I could do that with the mixed orders, filter out those on the website and get that spreadsheet open and just go across from one to the other to the other to the other. And once I had sent out the international tracked orders, I could filter those through my website and refer back and forth with that and the same thing with the international standard orders. So this day was also the very last day of packing. This is the carnage from last night's packing. Over here I just have a list of countries that don't require customs, forms, and just different postage information that I wrote out for myself a while ago. Um, and over here are the orders, the tracked orders that I packaged up last night and was hoping to send off today with the mixed orders, but unfortunately still having trouble accessing my PayPal account to get that money out. So. I'm going to package up the rest of these today, these are the last orders, just the standard international orders. I started out the day just thinking I'm going to carry on, I don't, you know, I can keep packing them even if I can't pay to send them out, I can carry on just getting them ready to go out. Thankfully, I'm really lucky, I'm really grateful, my mum lent me the remaining money that I needed. I mean it came to like over a thousand pounds um, just for that last day, so like I was really lucky to be in a position to have someone there that could lend me that money for um, currently an indefinite amount of time because it still hasn't been sorted out. I've got that postage money sitting there in my PayPal account, I just can't get to it right now, which is... <laughs> Alright, so this was the biggest day of packaging. There were, I think, 200 and 60 maybe to still sort through and at this point I was doing the wrapping in tissue paper and the putting them in envelopes and the postage labels pretty much all at the same time just had them all spread out over my desk and just started at the beginning of the day and kept going until I was done on this day I did encounter a bit of a problem with my printer um, I was sticking the labels on that I printed out you know one after the other one after the other and I came across a name that I recognised I thought Isaiah, I feel like I just had an Isaiah so went back through the ones that I'd already applied stickers to and realised that there had in fact been an Isaiah already and it was the same Isaiah, it was the same postage label and what had happened was my printer had jammed on a couple of occasions without me realising and when it jams it fixes itself but then it starts from scratch whatever print job it's doing so I had doubles of loads of the postage labels so something that's not really within my control but you learn from these kind of errors and you adjust your process according to that so from then on what I did was when I printed out a batch of labels, I would check the PDF file where I had all the labels and there would be, you know, 154 labels on there. I would get my batch of printed labels and count them, make sure that there were 154 sheets of paper in that batch. And, you know, if it was more than that, then it meant that there were doubles in there and I would have to be more vigilant and see if I could find those. So thankfully I spotted that, otherwise I guess, you know, Isaiah and several other people would have ended up with two and some people would have ended up with none because I would have run out. 
but yeah, once I'd spotted that and once I'd kind of figured out a way around it, it was smooth sailing. I just cracked on from daylight till night time and when I got to that very last one, it was someone called Alan. I don't think I'll ever forget Alan because it was just such a momentous moment to be finished with that pile. One thing with the international orders is that they all need customs labels as well. Well, not all of them, but yeah, those all kind of need filling out manually. Um, but again, it's the kind of thing that once you've done it a few times, you get into a rhythm and it just becomes muscle memory. All right, and then I finally got to the bottom of the pile. The last name on there, I pretty much straight away grabbed a bag and started bagging them up just because I thought if I leave these I'm just going to collapse into bed and not do anything so I gathered them all up and then the next day, the day that I was dreading, was the massive trip to the post office. I don't know if you guys get this but I hate being like a nuisance, even if it's someone's job I don't want to come with like loads of stuff for them to do. Um, but yeah they were really nice, they, you know, I guess they see that kind of stuff all the time. So I had five big bags full of orders that I just kind of left there for them to deal with and then they were all up, they were all gone, they were off into the postal abyss ready to meet their new owners. There are probably quite a lot of them still out there, I think it takes maybe seven to ten days for things to reach places like Canada and got some orders, got orders from all sorts of places, Saudi Arabia and Hawaii and the Caribbean, Sri Lanka, just all around the world. It was insane. Um, but yeah, I think it'll take a little while for them to trickle into their new homes. Um, but it just feels like such a relief to have them gone, have my room back. And that day after taking them to the post office, I looked like a complete bum and I just spent a long time gathering up all the little bits of paper and plastic, gathered it all up into a cardboard box and have just got this massive pile of recycling that I need to take out at some point but it's still there sitting outside my room at the moment. And that's pretty much it. I feel like this hasn't been that informative. I'm really worried that none of this has made sense but I do feel like this is the kind of thing where once you start doing it, it does start to make more sense. Like a lot of it comes with experience and a lot of it also comes with making mistakes. I made so many mistakes with my first few orders when I first opened my shop um, a year or so ago. Um, and every single time you change how you do things to make it work, to make sure that that kind of thing doesn't happen again. I spent a lot of time um, responding to emails after that. Obviously with the site going down, a lot of people were concerned about whether their order had gone through. Thankfully for anyone whose money came through, the order went through. So there's no one that's paid and isn't gonna get anything. Um, I've also spent a lot of time on and off the phone with PayPal. Um, that issue is still ongoing, but I don't know, it's an interesting one. It's very stressful, I'll be honest, not having money. Just having completely emptied all my accounts is the first time in a long time where I've been in a position like this where, you know, I was thinking about getting the bus the other day and then I thought, oh wait, no, I can't, like £1.50, I actually can't afford that right now. But at the same time, it hasn't taken away from this whole achievement in itself. Um, just the fact that so many people would be interested in that little snippet of my life, that little you know, a copy of my sketchbook, my month, that means so much more than, you know, the money that I would make from those sales. So I'm completely over the moon. I am also very tired, um, but it's been amazing and I can't wait to do something like this again. I hope that this video has been interesting. I hope that it has helped. Uh, if anyone is still watching, um, Shout out to you, because I know that this might be just completely useless, boring information. But yeah, I'm currently just working on a couple more commitments that I have, and then as of Sunday, I think, I am going to be taking a week off. So really looking forward to that. Looking forward to continuing to vlog this month, show you a bit more stuff that isn't, you know, postage related. Um, and yeah, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.